Greetings, I am Cliff Rosendale. The purpose of this short video clip is to show you how I perform a skin examination. Now, I'm not suggesting this is the only correct way to do it, but it has evolved over many years of general practice focused on increasingly on skin cancer. Now, there are two people I would like to acknowledge as influencing the way I do the skin check. Firstly, Dr. Alan Cameron, a senior lecturer at the University of Queensland. And secondly, Oksana Marazava, who worked with me for several years as a melanographer before going on and specialising in dermatology. Now, Oksana is co-author of this textbook, Dermatoscopy and Skin Cancer, a handbook for hunters of skin cancer and melanoma. And there is an extensive section in this book on the skin cancer examination process. Now, to assist me today, we have Julie, and Julie is not my patient, but she has generously agreed to model that role for the purpose of this demonstration. I'll begin the examination by asking Julie the questions I routinely ask patients who I've examined before. The history taken for new patients is more detailed. Now, Julie, are there any changes in your health status since I saw you last time? No. And has there been any change at all in your family history with respect to skin cancer or melanoma? No. Are there any particular spots on your skin that you're concerned about today? No, except for one above my hip on the left-hand side. It's quite dark. That's on your back? That's just above my hip. Okay, I'll check that. And are there any spots under your undies that have changed? No. Now, the reason I ask that question is because people often assume that there are no problems where the sun doesn't shine and so they won't volunteer information about things that change or things that appear in that location. But of course, that is not the case. It's very important to include that as a spe specific question. Okay, if you'd like to take your clothes off, put your clothes on the chair, leave your underwear on after I pull the curtain and then sit up on the couch facing this way. Okay, Julie, I'll just get to open up your mouth nice and wide. Thank you, wide, that's right. Okay, now get your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Great, and now look at your eyes, just looking up, looking down. So examining the mouth and eyes is very important, and I'll do it first so I won't forget to do it. Examining the mouth, um, you're looking for melanomas, they're rare, but they happen, SCCs. Uh, you're looking at the lips, SCC of the lower lip is not uncommon. And looking at the eyes, BCCs on the lower eyelid margin, it's a common place for them to occur. And pigmentation of the white of the eye that can indicate melanoma of the conjunctiva. Now, having examined that with a LED torch from the camping shop, four settings, I use the, the low setting for looking at the face. I don't shine it directly in the eyes. I use the high power setting for examining the scalp, which you'll see in a minute. Now, then I pick up a non-contact dermatoscope. This is a polarized dermatoscope with the foot plate retracted, and I can just use it to quickly scan the area of the body that I'm examining without making actual contact with the skin. The initial examination is to pick up anything which is obvious, and that includes the face in this position, the hands, the nails, in between the fingers, both sides of the hands, the forearms. And by using the dermatoscope as my light source for my examination, I can quickly look at anything of interest. And that's not just things which I think are abnormal. It's anything that's there, because doing it this way, I can move very quickly. And by looking at lots of normal things, I reinforce my knowledge of what they look like and I have a chance of finding things which look normal without the dermatoscope, which are abnormal with the dermatoscope. In this position, I don't retract any underwear. I just look at the exposed skin. Having examined the front, move to the back of the patient. Examine the back of the neck, the back of the ears, the back, upper back, I retract underwear to look at any particular lesions that might be there. And I move down to the lower part of the back. All these areas of skin will be examined again when the patient lies down. 
Now, Julie, I'll get you to lie down, please, face up with your head on the pillow. Now, the first thing I do in this position is examine the lymph node basins. Um, it's an important part of a routine skin examination, starting with the supraclavicular, posterior cervical, anterior cervical, submandibular, and submental. Then the axillary lymph nodes, and the inguinal lymph node basins. Examine as if you're expecting to find something. Normally now I'd retract the bra, I'd retract the undies to look at those areas. I won't do that today. Having done examine the lymph node basins, I now examine the anterior surface of the body with a contact dermatoscope, defaulting to polarised mode, but getting ready to use non-polarised mode if I need extra information from that modality. Again, using the dermatoscope as my light source, carefully inspecting the canthi, the nasolabial groove, every part of the face 75% of skin cancers occur on the head and neck, so it's a very important area to examine carefully. And now moving over the anterior surface of the lower limbs, the nails, in between the toes. You can't afford to hurry a skin examination has to be done carefully because the one place you don't inspect properly is likely to harbour something important. Okay, now Julie, I'll get you to lie on your side facing that way, please. Giving patients direct instructions by pointing is one way of guaranteeing that they won't go the wrong way. And by doing it the same way every time, I haven't got to think about what I'm doing next. I can focus on what I'm looking for, skin cancers and melanomas. And with this process of examination, in my practice, I can expect to find a melanoma every second day. And for each melanoma, about 10 basal cell carcinomas and about five squamous cell carcinomas. Now, you can see I'm having no trouble examining the scalp with my LED torch on bright mode, moving the hair aside. Because the patient is supine or lying down, the hair stays where I put it. It's very important to examine the scalp very carefully because if a patient gets a melanoma on the scalp, an invasive melanoma, it's four times more likely to cause death than a melanoma on the reference area of the back. So now, carefully examining the side of the face, the ear, front and back, the canthi, the nasolabial groove, the cheeks, chin, moving down over the neck, the upper limb, retracting the underwear, looking at things just because they're there. It should have moved this leg back for you, Julie. So by moving the top limb back, is my favourite way of getting to see both limbs completely by the time I roll the patient the full 360 degrees. Now Julie, I'll get you to lie face down please and pull the pillow under your chest and breathe through the hole in the couch there. Now examining the posterior surface of the scalp in the same manner, it's not difficult to get a good view of the scalp with a very, very bright LED torch, moving the hair aside, and most importantly, not hurrying. You need to make adequate time for a skin examination and take your time doing it, expecting to find something. So here is the lesion that Julie was concerned about, and it has the morphology of a nevus. 
There's a dark one here, which also is a nevus, both perfectly symmetrical. The mangiomas, we're seeing lots and lots of normal things. And this is a great opportunity to see what normal things look like in their different variations because the five common benign things, which make up 99.9% .9 of what you will encounter, are nevi, benign keratinocytic, hemangioma, dermatofibroma, and sebaceous gland hyperplasia. And if you become an expert at seeing them, because you can see hundreds every day, you'll soon recognise what is not normal. And then you can focus your attention on sorting that out. Okay, Julie, I'll get you to lie on your side facing away from me, please. So again, starting with the scalp. As you can see, patients often wonder where to put their arms. I let them sort it out for themselves. It gives them something to do. But patients often have trouble sorting out the most appropriate place to put their limbs, but that's okay. Again, looking at each part of the face carefully. And uh, moving down over the right side. Retracting underwear to make sure you're not missing any skin at all. You should move this top leg back, please, and the bottom one forward. Okay, now, Julie. I've examined all of your skin and I haven't found anything I'm concerned about. If you'd like to sit up now facing this way, and is there anything that you can think of now that you're concerned about that I haven't commented no, on? you've done a great job. Thank, Thank you. you.